The story begins at a border between California and Mexico, where four men and an entertainer woman are committing a drug deal. They're in unity. Suddenly, some individuals claiming to be members of the DEA ambush the scene. One of them realizes that two of the four involved in the transaction are undercover DEA agents. It's me, it's Kahane! No, 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 we're DEA, we're DEA! The situation becomes chaotic when the four ambushers start killing everyone. Two other entertainer women, catching the action, try to escape from the area. The four masked men then leave with a bag of drugs and a suitcase of money they grabbed. Then they looked for the two women who witnessed the incident. Luckily, the two women managed to hide under a bridge. Soon after, police sirens are heard in the distance, causing the four men to end their search quickly. We gotta go. Luckily, these two female witnesses were finally able to escape the pursuit. Otherwise, this movie recap might have ended here. At the police station, a middle-aged border police officer named Travis Johansson gets called into the room by his supervisor, Hernandez. Inside the room, Hernandez shows a video of Johansson acting harshly towards a Mexican immigrant while on duty. The video has spread widely, and according to Hernandez, Johansson's actions have embarrassed their police institution. Because of his actions, Hernandez gives Johansson a task where he must go to Mexico to pick up two women who are witnesses to the shooting incident of two DEA agents. In the evening, Johansson meets his friends, including Adam Hiltz, his police colleague, and his retired friend, Brenner. While joking about Johansson, Brenner even suggests that Johansson should refuse the task from his supervisor, Hernandez, who sends him to pick up witnesses in a Mexican jail. Johansson wants to avoid the task because he dislikes Mexican people, as many of them bring drugs and migrate illegally to America. In the middle of their conversation, two other friends of Johansson join them. The next day, Johansson started his mission towards Mexico. Upon reaching the border area, he met a Mexican federal police officer named De La Cruz. De La Cruz was assigned to accompany Johansson to pick up two witnesses to the shooting of DEA members. After driving for three hours, Johansson finally met the two female witnesses, Rosa Barranco and Leticia. They got into the car and quickly left for the border between America and Mexico. Midway, a Mexican police car approached and signaled them to pull over. Suddenly, the two Mexican officers turned out to be working with a drug mafia, attempting to kill the two witnesses inside the car. Freeze! Drop the weapon! After killing the two officers, Johansson reported to Hernandez and asked for help. However, realizing he was shot, Johansson ended the call. Meanwhile, in the car, Rosa was hysterically crying over Leticia, who had died. After things calmed down, Johansson asked Rosa to get a first aid kit from the Mexican police vehicle. However, Rosa used this chance to take a policeman's rifle and point it at Johansson. But upon seeing Johansson's worsening condition, Rosa threw the weapon away. Then, she grabbed the first aid kit and began treating Johansson's stomach wound. Feeling his condition getting worse, Johansson asked Rosa to take him to the hospital quickly. Rosa said the hospital was not safe at the moment and that she knew a better place for them. Suddenly, Johansson's phone started ringing again. Rosa forbade Johansson from answering the call, fearing corrupt police might know their location. Soon after, Johansson, having lost a lot of blood, slowly lost consciousness. In short, Johansson was later cared for, with one hand handcuffed to a bed and a man constantly watching over him. Then, Rosa entered the room with a Mexican policeman named Miguel Barranco, her brother. Rosa explained that her brother was not going to kill Johansson like the two police officers who had attacked them. She said she had destroyed Johansson's phone and kept his weapon, advising Johansson to rest for a week to recover from his injuries. You need to rest. Wait. Johansson received good care, with Rosa's mother and cousin taking turns to look after him. Also, Rosa's mother made delicious traditional Mexican dishes, which Johansson enjoyed. 
Meanwhile, at the police station, Brenner and Hiltz, hearing about Johansson, became worried and asked Hernandez for the latest news about their friend. Brenner, a retired police officer, offered to help look for Johansson, but Hernandez politely declined, promising to contact Brenner if he needed help. At Rosa's family home, Rosa spent the morning giving Johansson his medicine and cleaning his wounds. Rosa then shared her suspicion of a conspiracy between American police and the Mexican cartel. Rosa believed this because she heard one of the attackers claim to be from the DEA during the attack. Upon hearing Rosa's explanation, Johansson asked for his phone back because he wanted to contact Hernandez to give the information. Just let me make a phone call. It's dangerous. Soon after, Rosa returned to the room. She told her mother to rest and that she would take over watching Johansson. Rosa asked Johansson if the American police would protect her if she went with him. Johansson explained that witness protection assistance was available for Rosa if she had relevant information. Hearing this, Rosa, who dreamed of living in America, agreed to return there. She then returned Johansson's phone so he could contact his supervisor. Rosa also asked Johansson to request his supervisor to pick them up without her brother Miguel's knowledge. At the police station in America, Hernandez gets a call from Johansson, who shares his location. Johansson asks Hernandez to send some people to pick him and Rosa up, but Hernandez offers Johansson to head to the nearest American consulate instead and will send someone to pick them up from there. After hearing this, Johansson tells Hernandez everything Rosa has said. Soon after, Miguel comes with clothes for Johansson and invites him to eat together. During the meal, Rosa explains that Johansson is now a target for the Mexican police and the FBI because they believe he killed De La Cruz and two Mexican police officers yesterday. Johansson is surprised because if he is considered a suspect, why does Miguel allow him to hide here? Miguel explains that he feels that he will repay the favor to Johansson for saving his sister, Rosa. That's why he lets Johansson hide in his house and promises to take Johansson back to America once he has recovered, but with one condition, Rosa cannot come with him. Aquí. He said I stay here. Johansson explained that he needed Rosa so she could tell the police about the death of a DEA agent. But Miguel firmly refused, causing tension between them. Soon after they handcuffed Johansson in the room, Rosa persuaded Miguel to let her go to America. Suddenly, a group of cartel members arrived at their house. They wanted Rosa and Johansson and promised to release the others. Salvador responded to their offer with gunfire, hitting one of the cartel members. Rosa and her mother quickly hid. Meanwhile, Johansson kept shouting for Miguel to unlock his handcuffs. Amidst the shootout, Miguel gave Salvador the key to unlock Johansson's handcuffs. Unfortunately, Salvador, who was attempting to deliver the key, was fatally shot from behind by one of the cartel members. Johansson protected himself using Salvador's rifle and managed to kill one of the cartel members. After unlocking his handcuffs, Johansson quickly rescues Miguel and kills all the attacking cartel members. Rosa and her mother, who were hiding, almost became targets of the cartel until Johansson suddenly killed the man. Meanwhile, outside, one cartel member managed to escape. After the incident, Miguel handed his car keys to Johansson and allowed him to take Rosa. Before leaving, Rosa's mother gave them her savings for travel funds. She also put a lucky necklace on Johansson and advised him that to fight wolves, Johansson must become a wolf. If you want to fight with the wolves, you gotta be a wolf. Because many people were searching for them and they didn't know who to trust, Rosa asked Johansson to go to an area and pay a migrant smuggler she trusted to take them to the American border the next day safely. Since the journey would start tomorrow, they decided to stay in a hotel. There, Johansson contacted Brenner to inform him of their pickup location. At the hotel, Rosa shared that many Mexicans don't have a home even in their old age. Living a life full of struggle and pain in Mexico makes some of them head to America for a better life opportunity. 
Even she, Letitia and Letitia's brother, once paid a smuggler to take them to America. However, during the journey, Letitia lost her brother after some people at the border attacked them. After spending some time in America, Rosa and Letitia once experienced a better life until they witnessed a murder by the DEA and had to flee back to Mexico. The following day, they were surprised by the arrival of Hiltz, who had suddenly appeared there. Hiltz, who did not come alone, said that they were concerned and then tracked Johansson's location from his call to Brinner. And that's how he found the hotel to pick up Johansson and Rosa. Even though Rosa had paid a smuggler to take her to America, Johansson decided to return home with his old friends. On the way, Johansson was puzzled by his friends, who were using two cars to pick them up and taking different routes for security reasons. Rosa, suspicious of Johansson's colleagues from the beginning, accidentally saw a bracelet Brinner wore, which she remembered as one of the criminals looking for her while hiding under the bridge. Using Mexican Spanish, Rosa then signaled to Johansson, convincing him that the four individuals were the ones chasing him on the night of the DEA agent's shooting. These are the wolves. Trust me. Johansson then said he wanted to speak privately with Brinner and asked him to step aside. He then confronted Brinner about the DEA agent's shooting incident. Brinner tried to deny any knowledge about the DEA or any police institution issues since he retired. Seeing the tension between them, Hiltz and Michael approached and asked what they were discussing. Suddenly, Brinner and Michael, who felt they could no longer hide their secret, took weapons and pointed them at Johansson. Hiltz explained that they were indeed the perpetrators of the ambush. Initially, they only intended to take money and drugs without knowing that there were two undercover DEA agents present. They had to kill the agents because one of them recognized Hiltz. Brenner then ordered Michael to fetch Rosa. He also tried to persuade Johansson to cooperate because they just needed to kill Rosa to solve their problem. Seeing Johansson's behavior, which seemed unwilling to cooperate and even tried to negotiate, Brinner planned to kill Johansson. Knowing this, Hiltz disagreed and reminded Brinner that this was not the right way. Hiltz tried to take Brinner's gun when suddenly a shot was fired. Michael tried to grab his weapon, leading to a duel between them. After killing Michael, Johansson managed to save Rosa just in time before Brinner could kill her. Suddenly, one of their companions who had been waiting in the car started shooting at them. Fortunately, Johansson acted quickly and was able to incapacitate his companion. When Johansson approached the dying Hiltz, he apologized for the mistakes they had made. Then, using Brinner's car, Johansson and Rosa went to meet a smuggler who would take them across Mexico using an illegal route to America. There, Johansson saw the hopeful smiles of the immigrants amid the complex obstacles and risks they had to overcome to reach America in search of a better life. Their happiness disappeared as they arrived at the border area, just one step away from America. Suddenly, several Mexican police officers arrived and arrested them. In short, five months later, Johansson returned to duty in the police force and received an award for his actions in rescuing a witness and for his honesty towards the police institution. Hernandez felt that Johansson's mission in Mexico had changed his view of the Mexican people. Shortly after, Rosa visited Johansson for the first time in the last five months. Rosa said the prosecutor offered her a deal, and now she's just waiting to become an American citizen officially. I'm now on my way to becoming an official U.S. citizen. They hugged each other.